All right, for those of you who can't sit still for a few minutes to learn some pretty interesting stuff, the TLDR on this video is that Tarkov audio has always been very good in many places and very bad in many other places. It's lacked reliable and intuitive vertical audio and has tons of bugs related to that. Steam audio has been partially added to Tarkov alongside their current audio system. So now in many cases, you should be able to tell if sounds are above, below, or behind without needing to turn your head or needing other context clues. But some of the old bugs with Tarkov's existing vertical audio can get in the way of this improvement, like issues with multi-floor buildings and stairwells. To use it, you need to go to your sound settings, enable binaural sound, and restart your game for the change to take effect. If that's all you came for and you're about to leave the video, at least toss it a like and, you know, comment something like TLDR gang before you uh, go to help this video get out to everyone in the community. All right, for the rest of you guys that have stuck around, let's get into the cool stuff, shall we? I'm going to pin a comment with the timestamps for each of the major sections once the video is up for easy navigation if you want to skip forward or back or if you want to come back to this video later and reference something quickly. I've been getting tons of questions about what Steam Audio is, how it works, what it means for the game, and whether or not you should use it. As with most new things, there's already tons of misconceptions and misunderstandings about it, so I'm going to do my best to give a thorough rundown of all of the relevant details. For those of you who haven't seen it already, I talked about this a uh, bunch on the latest episode of my podcast that I uh, host along with Jesse Kazam called The Podcast. I'm going to use that discussion a little bit as like a basic outline for what I'm going to be talking about here, getting into much more details, of course. But I wanted to plug the podcast because we talk mostly about Tarkov news, updates, stories, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff like our content creator stories, our favorite video games of all time and more. So please check that out if you haven't already. All right, so to give a bit of context here before I start, I'm going to be covering the following topics. First, I'm going to be discussing how Tarkov has historically handled directional, vertical, and environmental audio and some of the issues that it has now and has pretty much always had. After that, I'm going to give a high-level overview of the three primary features of Steam Audio, what Steam Audio is, what it provides, and what we have in Tarkov right now. And then finally, I'll be giving my personal opinions about Steam Audio today, where it's going in the future, and some recommendations for settings and other related things. And last but not least, before we get started, be sure to toss on a pair of headphones if you want to get the most from some of the examples that I'm going to be showing in this video. All right, so let's start off explaining how Tarkov audio um, has always pretty much been processed and how still is largely processed today, even with the partial Steam audio implementation. Let's start with an example where we have a top-down view of a man standing inside of a room inside of a small building or a shack or something like that, and suddenly a loud sound is played from outside in front of the building. Now, I've talked about a hunch I had about this before. I was able to run some tests that supported this and then recently was able to ask Nikita directly and he confirmed that my suspicions were correct. The system that Tarkov uses is known as a manual occlusion system. Effectively, what it means is that throughout each map, there are virtual barriers that are defined by the developers, typically along various surfaces like walls and floors that are used in processing sounds in the environment. All right, one quick caveat here. I just want to say that obviously what I'm showing is a simplification um, of you know my best understanding of how things are implemented. I don't have access to the code or anything like that. So I'm not claiming this is exactly how it's done, um, but this should give us a pretty decent understanding to start with. Much of audio and video processing is done using what's called a ray, which you can think about as just basically a line drawn between two points in a space. Now a ray is cast out from the listener to a sound source. So in this example, a ray would be cast out from the listener to an external sound source. If the source of the sound is emitting a sound, we then need to determine if the ray intersected any of the previously mentioned virtual barriers that the developers defined. If an intersection occurred, the barrier would have a predefined acoustic properties that would be applied to the source sound before being sent back to the player, simulating the effect of the wall muffling the sound. The processing here would likely involve something like the reduction and filtering out of, you know, different frequencies along the spectrum, um, as well as changing the volume, maybe adding reverb and stuff. All of this leads to the sound appearing to be distant and or muffled. Now, depending on if the sound is to the right or the left of the person's line of sight relative to the source of the sound, the resulting sound can be panned to the left or the right audio channel, giving context, albeit incomplete, as to the horizontal position. So as I mentioned in one of my previous sound localization videos, this system allows us to deduce the location of sound directly in front or behind by turning our heads and observing how the sound moves between the left and right channels of our headphones. It's not amazing, but it works. So note that in this example, there's only four barriers defined along the outside walls of the structure. 
These virtual barriers ignore things like doors, windows, and interior walls. I'm assuming because of the amount of work required to literally have somebody manually define geometries for thousands upon thousands of the relevant surfaces in the game. Now again, while the actual implementation of the existing Tarkov audio system is very likely more complex than this, it can effectively be described with the following heuristic. Is the sound source playing a sound? If yes, was the sound blocked by anything? If yes, does that thing allow sound through? Yes. So how is it going to change the sound as it passes through? Do that, send it back to the player. Now while this system works in most cases, it is admittedly naive. Now what I mean by this is that it doesn't take into account a massive number of relevant factors. Like I mentioned, doors, windows, vertical distance, you know, a, a lot of the ambient sounds, stuff like that. As most of us know, this can result in some really funky behavior that we've all probably experienced before, and some of these behaviors are quite problematic. <laughs> the fucking sound, dude! Different areas of the map have their own sort of ambient background noise. So not only are the different sounds you hear in the environment themselves processed differently, but all of the sounds are heard in a different auditory context depending on the exact location of the player. We can observe this admittedly kind of funny phenomenon by standing on the threshold of a doorway between the inside and outside. Taking one step in or out drastically changes the auditory ambience and results in drastically different audio processing of the same sound even though you've only moved a few inches due to that naive occlusion logic mentioned earlier. Now opening and closing doors or breaking windows or if you know the building has a you know a hole in the corner or something none of those things actually affect the resulting sound heard by the player as you would in real life. Those objects in the game are not a part of the occlusion logic. Now onto the issue with stairs, of course I don't know the exact cause, otherwise I would have told BSG years ago, but I can think of a couple potential causes that come to mind. The first is that the manually placed occlusion layers maybe extend into the openings of the stairwells between the floors. This would result in the game behaving as if there was a solid wall between, you know, the fifth step and the second step of a stairwell, which would block the sound, making some people effectively silent until they are, you know, one or two steps away from you. Another idea is that, you know, maybe there's a bug with their ray casting logic that fails to properly identify when an intersection occurs um, for a, you know, horizontally oriented occlusion layer. Again, who knows what the real cause is? Those are just a couple of things that come to mind where if I was trying to debug this, I would start looking. Now, it's worth mentioning that we can't apply the same head turn test that we use for left and right audio ambiguities for vertical audio, unless, of course, we had ears on the top and bottom of our heads. This is also why surround sound doesn't really work in games like Tarkov that only supports stereo audio. The game isn't giving more than two channels of audio. It's only providing left and right. So all of the additional speakers that, you know, either surround sound headphones or whatever uh, have, they can't provide information to your ears that the game doesn't give them. They can't give you information they don't have. If anything, they may make it worse by spreading out the sound wider than it needs to be. Uh, would, making everything more ambiguous, but you know that's for another day and for another video. Now, with all that being said, all the issues that we've talked about, you know, all the bugs and frustrations, luckily for us, the future is bright. With the latest patch, 12.6, we've had the first iteration of Steam Audio. So what the hell is Steam Audio anyway? Well, Steam Audio is a software SDK that provides 3D physics-based audio for many engines like Unity and Unreal. So what's an SDK? Well, it stands for Software Development Kit, and it's effectively a package of software and documentation given to developers to add a specific set of features to their existing applications as quickly and easily as possible. Now, in the case of Steam Audio, its goal is to provide a robust set of features aimed at improving the immersion and performance of video game audio, attempting to replicate how sound behaves in real-world environments inside the game's virtual environment in an efficient and performant manner. Now, Steam Audio has three primary features. 12.6 uh, introduced the first of the three primary features, uh, which I'll get to right now, spatialization. 
So let me start by explaining the phrase that most people have been asking about because it's the literal name of the setting in Tarkov sound setting screen, binaural sound. Binaural, stemming from bi as in two, and oral as in ears, similar to binocular for our eyes, is how we as humans have evolved to perceive, understand, process sounds. The internal and external shape of our ears and head and also torso play a role in how sounds are heard by each ear individually, as well as how they're ultimately processed together as something that we experience in real time as sort of one sound. Humans are able to naturally determine the location of sounds in the real world in a few different ways, but primarily by comparing monaural cues, sounds heard in each individual ear, along with binaural cues, sounds that are heard by both ears, and processing that information together. Now I came across a fantastic video by a gentleman named Matthew Lyon detailing his work with binaural recording that I would highly recommend you check out if this is something that interests you. Let's listen to a quick excerpt from the video that gives one of the best examples of normal recordings versus binaural recordings, side by side. And in the case of binaural recording, a microphone is used that looks just like the human head. With a microphone in each of the ears, the sound is sent directly to each of your own ears when headphones or earphones are used. You'll have the sense that you are actually in the same space with the location of sound around you just as though you were actually there. Unlike normal audio on headphones, which sounds like it's right in the middle of your head or right against the side of your ears, binaural audio is a much more natural and realistic sound, and this is what we call 3D sound. Now, although it isn't perfect due to the differences between the dummy's ear and head dimensions and structures when compared to every individual listener, binaural recordings essentially capture the sounds that each individual ear would hear if it was in that space, and when coupled with a pair of headphones, to play that sound directly into your ears without any interference from your environment can produce some amazingly immersive experiences. Now in games like Escape from Tarkov, we don't have the luxury of being able to use a binaural recording setup like the one shown in Matthew Lyon's video, because the sound sources, environments, and listeners are all virtual. So how the hell does Steam Audio do it? Here's where I'm gonna introduce something that a lot of people have heard before but might not know what it means, and that's HRTF, or Head Related Transfer Function. Now I'm gonna spare us the math bits about function convolution and Fourier transforms because honestly, I'm too lazy right now to get back into my dusty old grad school engineering textbooks and try to relearn all this crap. So again, I'll spare you, but what head related transfer function does at a high level is quite fascinating. First, we start with a source sound, which is specified by a frequency and a location relative to the listener. That information is used as an input into some magical maths functions that effectively reproduce how that sound wave would diffract or bend and reflect or bounce in and off of the head, ears, and torso of the listener, eventually resulting in some newly filtered sound on your eardrum. So with an HRTF, all we need is the sound and its relative location to you in the virtual environment, and we can process it to output an amazingly accurate representation of that sound as it would be heard in each of your ears were you standing in that space. Now the significance of this is that the processing that HRTFs do ultimately gives us the same auditory context clues that we use in our everyday lives to localize sounds above and below us quite accurately, as well as in front and behind. See, like, I can tell it's right there. That's pretty fucking sick. As much as I love explaining the ins and outs of HRTF and how it works, none of that really compares to experiencing for yourself the difference that HRTF provides. Now, I came across a gentleman named Matthew Kurzweil. Uh, he does level design, art, 3D modeling, and I'm sure a ton more. He created an interactive demo allowing us to compare Steam audio versus traditional audio and experiment with different sounds to experience it for yourself. Let me demonstrate a few comparisons now, and again, headphones are recommended. Rather than blabber on, I'm just gonna throw some text up on the screen, uh, you know, for any notes or comments that I might have. Enjoy.
Now remember, all that we're outputting here is a left and a right channel of audio. So we're able to achieve an amazingly detailed 3D audio experience in stereo without the need for fancy external virtual spatial audio processing or 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound gamer RGB headphones. None of that stuff matters. The addition of HRTF still sits alongside the existing audio processing that Tarkov has always had, meaning it's essentially bolted onto the same batch of weird behaviors and bugs I described earlier. This isn't perfect, but it's the way it is. It's a temporary stopgap until the rest of it's implemented. And so far as I can tell, there's not really many negatives, um, but there are many positives. There are still so many people complaining about bugs that like people shouldn't be sneaking up on them on stairways without being heard, for example. But they're blaming it on Steam Audio when the actual parts of the code that cause those problems have nothing to do with Steam Audio and have been in the game forever. So, in a nutshell, as it exists today, the Steam Audio integration in Tarkov includes binaural audio, but binaural audio is actually only one small piece of the Steam Audio puzzle. Battlestate's already working on the integration of the other primary features that Steam Audio provides, occlusion and reverb, both of which I think will aid in improving or even removing entirely many of the problems outlined earlier. So earlier when I gave the example of Tarkov's existing audio system with the uh, you know, top-down view of the guy in the building, um, we talked about the concept of occlusion. Now, what occlusion is, it's how the frequency and volume of sounds are affected by objects between the listener and the sound source. In order for occlusion to be simulated in a video game, a system like Steam Audio needs to be aware of the environment or the different surfaces and geometries in the world so that it can replicate how sounds would interact with these geometries and change the resulting sound. Steam Audio integrates directly in with the game engine. It's aware of the environment and the geometries that already exist. There's no need to manually define all the different occlusion layers like Tarkov is currently doing. Pretty much all that needs to be done is to define the materials and their acoustic properties for the significant geometries in the space that should affect the sound, and Steam Audio pretty much does the rest. So let's use the same example and see how Steam Audio would handle it slightly differently. Let's cast a few rays from the listener to some noteworthy points in the environment. We're going to ignore other rays here that aren't relevant to this example. Now, casting rays from those points through other relevant points of interest until they collide with some other surface and continuing this process eventually until we are at a point that is within line of sight of a nearby sound source that's emitting sound. As we can see, there's multiple paths that sound would travel in this environment through walls, doorways, windows. The sound source would be processed uniquely along each of these paths, having additional processing done to it every step of the way until it's back in line of sight of the listener, in which case its frequency and position could then be used as an input back into the HRTF that we discussed before, resulting in you hearing the final sound individually in each ear. Now, in the case of an explosion or a gunshot or something outside, you'd be experiencing this sound primarily through the direct line of sight through the open doorway as it was the least affected path but you'd also be hearing some of that sound coming through the windows, the walls, as well as from the side rooms, front windows, through the doorway, off the walls, etc. Now this would undoubtedly give a much more immersive and realistic auditory experience compared to the same sound source with minimal processing and single raycast that I showed before. Now obviously the more rays you cast, the more detailed or higher resolution the sound gets, but of course the trade-off as always is performance, so that would need to be tuned. The final elements here involve a few concepts that are often conflated reflection, reverberation, and echo. Reflection is the process of a sound wave bouncing off of a surface, changing its properties like speed, angle, and amplitude. An echo is when a single sound is reflected off of a surface once and then travels back to be heard a second time, slightly altered from the original. A reverberation is the accumulation of all of the reflections of sounds within the environment, bouncing off of the different walls and surfaces, being partially absorbed, bouncing back off of other ones, all over the place, creating a much more complex soundscape within the environment. So Steam Audio processes these effects as well, taking into account the different acoustic properties of the different materials of all of the obstacles in the environment. It's going to process the sounds differently if they were reflected off of wood versus glass or carpet versus metal. All of these are going to absorb and reflect sounds differently. All of this, reflection, reverb, absorption, everything, is modeled and processed in Steam Audio. Now I want to mention Matthew Lyon's video once more, as later on in his video he talks about his travels around the world recording what are essentially binaural audio fingerprints of some of the most beautiful buildings around the world, and then is able to recreate the same 3D spatial effect on any sound as if it was played inside those buildings. It's a wonderful video, you should check it out. Here's a quick preview.
now. This is what my voice sounds like if it were within Frauenberg, and this is what the flute sounds like. So the last note here on performance, you might be thinking to yourself, that sounds like a shit ton of overhead. Wouldn't that make my game perform even worse than it already does? Well, the answer to that is, I don't know, maybe. Now, I personally haven't had any issues with performance. I think I've heard a few uh, grumblings from some folks that have had issues either launching the game or, you know, the game has been performing worse. Um, I'm not really sure what the, the, the overall state is in the community, but it's something that we're going to want to keep an eye on. But the devs themselves boast claims like they can handle rendering thousands of sound sources in an environment using only a single core. Now, I'm pretty sure this sort of thing uses the GPU rather than the CPU for all of the math and stuff involved. And Tarkov has historically underutilized the GPU, so perhaps we can get, you know, a lot of this stuff without much of a performance hit. Again, we'll have to see. I know their initial implementation still has some tweaking, and Nikita said they can't improve the performance already, and they're working on that. So there's probably going to be, uh, you know, one or two minor patches before, um, you know, big Steam Audio additional upgrades come in the future. We'll just have to see. So in summary, I very much recommend that you give Steam Audio a try in Tarkov as soon as you're able. It might take a bit to get used to. It's slightly different, but it's worth it. You can enable Steam Audio by checking the box for binaural audio in the sound settings of your game and make sure you restart it for it to take effect. Also, for the thousandth time, please God turn off all that Windows, Spatial Sound, Dolby Atmos, Digital Synthetic Surround Sound, Gamer Mode, Immersion, whatever. Ignore all that stuff. You don't need any of that stuff. All you need is simple stereo audio and a, even a mediocre pair of headphones and you'll be fine. And remember, the current system is a partial implementation. They basically have the original sound system in the game with a bolted on segment of Steam Audio. So there's still some weirdness and most of the bugs still exist. There's more to come that will make this system even better and hopefully get rid of issues that we've seen once and for all. Please, for the love of God, stop blaming Steam Audio for every issue that you have in the game, especially ones that have been there all along. Just have patience, friends, patience. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something, and I hope to see you uh, drop by the live stream soon. Peace.